What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And when it comes to this whole off-roading, overlanding, camping thing, I mean, it's, it's pretty much common knowledge that it is mostly a male-dominated activity. Um, you know, most of the time when we go out, always see your guys. Most of the time, you know, the bulk of the audience at the Overland Expos and rallies and stuff like that are guys. Well, if you've been following the channel for a while, then you know that I am lucky enough to have a wife who loves doing this stuff with me. Um, if you're new to the channel and haven't seen Karen and I out to get, hold on, hold on. So my wife, Kara, um, that's, that's her Jeep, um, the, the pink Wrangler. It's a very nice JL on 38s. She can wheel the crap out of that thing. And uh, this, this is my wife. This is Kara, these, these are our two dogs. Um, but this is Kara. And when it comes to wheeling and overlanding, camping, all that sort of thing, this, this woman right here, she's pretty much a badass. She can, she can wheel with the best of the men. She can start a campfire. She can pretty much do it all and has all of her own gear to do it all. What are you doing? And we get asked a lot and we see it asked in various forms and whatnot. Um, how does a guy who loves the outdoors, loves off-roading and camping, overlanding, all that sort of stuff, how does a guy get his wife to love going out with him? And so that's what we're going to talk about. You want to come help me? After this chapter. Nope. Come on. Let's go. Uh, come on. This probably is not going to go well since I brought her out here. But let's give it a shot. Okay. All right. So we get asked a lot, you know, how do I get my spouse involved in overlanding and off-roading, going out camping? How do I get her involved in that? Because she didn't really, she didn't care for that. Yeah. Um, I, luckily, I, I've never had that problem. Never had that problem. But over the years, uh, we have, I, I think, found some things that have made your life yes. a lot easier yes. in, in going out that I think will be very helpful. So as a woman, going out camping, when we go out for extended periods of time, what are the things that have made your life easier out on the trail? Um, being able to take a shower. Um, having a place to go to the bathroom that's comfortable and just, I mean, it's, it all revolves around comfort. Comfort and probably cleanliness too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably one of the biggest things that we hear and, and you know, we've, we've discussed this over the years. I think there's, there's really two, two main categories that we can talk about that will, that I think will help get your wife, girlfriend, whatever, mm -hmm. out on the trail. I think, and the first category is... The bathroom. Personal hygiene, cleanliness. Oh, like showers? Things. Like uh, all the things. All, oh, all those sort of things. All of that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think bathroom is a huge deal. Oh, absolutely. For women. Yeah, because um, nobody not wants quite to... A, it's super easy for us. Yeah, you it, can just whip it really out. <laughs> I wasn't going to say that, but it's true. I, I mean, it's just so much easier for us to go to the bathroom out on the trail than it is for a woman. And I mean, technically, they make the whole shoey, Tinkerbell, whatever Which thing. Which you've never tried, so we can't recommend. I wouldn't probably ever <laughs> try that. I, I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I... I First, Rochelle Croft swears by it. She does. <laughs> um, first, as as the man, um, let me say, you definitely have to adjust your expectations. Um, she's not going to just rush out and be, you know, Jane to your Tarzan and you know, just embrace the roughing it. Yeah. Um, so you have to be willing but she to may make. Be. She may. Be. No, no. Um, I, I think if she was, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Or they wouldn't be watching. Or they were not going to be watching, exactly. So I think you as the man have to um, adjust your expectations and be willing to modify maybe your current routine. You or need to be current, willing. Or like, your current, what you pack yeah, in your space. Yeah, you need space. to be willing to pack extra stuff yeah. to accommodate your wife going. 
Yeah. Um, you need to be willing to make room in the rig or the trailer. You need to make um, adjustments over some of the type of gear. Or you may gear. be getting a trailer. Or getting, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you are serious about wanting your, your spouse to go out with you or wife and girl, whatever, um, like, like we get to, because mm -hmm. that's some of our favorite things to do is just to go out, get away, explore, Absolutely. and be off grid. Um, you need to be able to adjust your expectations in regards to things you take with you, amount of time it may yeah. take at camp to get mm -hmm. ready. Uh, we have we have found some, we've got some stuff. Um, as far as the bathroom aspect goes, I, I think this was the biggest game changer for you at the very beginning. When I first started, yeah. yeah. Because um, you that had, is... Yeah, it's really dirty. That's this. This has been so through a lot. It's been in a lot of states. Uh, but this is, the, this is a cassette toilet. Uh, this is by Dometic, not necessarily embracing this one or this brand. There's a bunch of different ones, but it is, it, it mimics a real toilet. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's all about the seat. The seat is a big deal. The seat is a big deal. Um, and this one actually, this comes off. Um, this one actually stores water up here. It stores RV um, waste treatment stuff down here. Yep. And so this one actually flushes. So this, it's almost like you're on the toilet at home. Yeah, I mean, um, we didn't you, it, start it, with this for pumps. sure for me. Like you had given and me a bucket to try. Yes, started with the five gallon bucket. Not uh, good. They actually make a seat, a toilet seat that fits on five gallon buckets. I did do that, we didn't do a pool noodle. I mean, some people do a pool noodle um, with a bag with They're kitty so litter lucky. in it. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant. I thought it was a brilliant idea. For some reason, that didn't go over well with neither her nor my daughters having no. a bucket with kitty litter in it. <laughs> no. I thought it was a brilliant idea. But this mimics an actual toilet. Um, it, it, has, it flushes. You do this little pump and it flushes all the waste mm -hmm. into the bottom tank. And then it, it has this, that, that seals it up. And, and another thing that it, made this really good that I could use out in the woods. I didn't change it when I got home. Mm, yeah, that, that's, <laughs> that was the sacrifice on my part is having to change, is having to dump I'm this. Like, you want either me to at go? an RV, okay, you know, an RV dump it. station, or you know, being on a week long trip and saving it for when we got home. That was horrible. Um, <laughs> leaving it in the garage. For leaving it in the garage for a week or two. That was real bad. Um, <laughs> but yeah, something like this. But um, yeah, I think this is a great place to start because it does mimic the, the actual toilet. Yeah. And, and like it, I said, there's it, different it a, brands. It has a flusher and it hides everything. Um, but now, mm -hmm. you we, we no longer like this. No, because the smell, so like the, it's good because you don't have to see it. Like if you go and you're dealing with it or whatever, you it flushes. Like it goes into this other compartment. Yeah, it goes into this tank. But and it seals after off. two or three days, you haven't changed it out. You're still. It smells like a porta potty. When you open this, it smells like a porta potty. It smells like a closed space. Yeah. It was not yeah. good. So we have gone from that mm -hmm. to now this. This is love a clean this. waste toilet. I've never seen, I love um, this. Yeah, um, this is a clean waste toilet. It's, There's one uh, thing that I don't like about it is it's really hard to like put down. It, it's easy to set up. It's hard to take down. Yeah. But this is, uh, this. these use bags, um, which mm -hmm. I didn't bring out here with me. But there's there's a bag system with some gel stuff in it. Mm -hmm. You put the bag in here. And it's a big bag. And you, you do your business in the bag. And, oops. And then when you're done, mm -hmm. and this is actually a bigger seat than that one, it's actually real yeah. printable. And when you're done, you just pull the bag out, you, you fold it up, and it goes in another bag that's got a, a Ziploc type of closure yeah. at the top. And then boom, you throw that in the trash. So it's a one and done. Yeah. You're not going in here and having the porta potty smell. Yeah, and it's not just one and done. Like, if you're just peeing, if you're just peeing I in can it, use yeah. it a couple times. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do too much just because I don't want to trust the bag. But, um, but, but yeah, definitely one and done, and you don't have to smell with it. And then when you open it up every time, it's just fresh. Yeah, it's, it's just clean. clean and done. It's clean. You don't have to shovel. And you don't have to do, deal yeah, with cat no, litter. No digging. Matt it's doesn't just, have to change this. No, it's not disgusting when you get home. Yeah. And so we, we've we now moved to this, and it folds up a whole lot smaller but than I'm the other But I'm kind of OCD about how clean this stays, because I want it to be really clean. Well, you're OCD about a lot well, of Well, I want it to be that's clean. Fine. That's fine. And that's that's an accommodation that I will deal with, because I'm not OCD about anything. Nothing. Not, not a thing. And sometimes it's an argument, because I'm like, where is the yeah, bathroom? Not a, not a thing. Hmm. Um, so that's, that's some ideas for the toilet, yeah. which definitely work and definitely make going to the bathroom much nicer they do and dealing with that hygiene thing yeah um some women just you know they they just have to take a shower every day 
-hmm. They just want to feel clean. They want to put their makeup on. They just, they, they want to have that level of, of cleanliness and stuff. And that can be a real barrier. Yeah, I because think I've not everybody, nine days. <laughs> you, you, you've gone pretty close to that. I'm pretty sure yeah. it was nine days before yeah. I started having a panic attack because my head was like, <laughs> I need to wash my hair. Um, and so I, the great thing about doing this and, you know, Mm -hmm. What are we, 2023 now? Yeah. Um, is there so many options? Yeah. Uh, we, we got this. Yeah. Um, this is the Boss. It's by Mr. Heater. I'm not sure if they actually make this one anymore, but this has been a favorite of ours. This is a portable hot water system, and it runs off a battery that's built into it, runs off propane, uh, but this will give you a very nice hot shower. I think we like this better than the shower that's in our trailer. We do, because this <laughs> stays hot. Um, in our camper does it not gets stay really hot. hot and you can use this for washing dishes you can use it for a lot of things mm -hmm. uh, like i said i don't know that they even make this anymore uh, but there's some other brands that have have similar the things than, than mr heater um, but this is definitely an option for taking a shower you just mm -hmm. put up a, one of those pop-up privacy tents yeah and take a shower in it and it is a legit hot very nice shower <laughs> that you can have at camp mm -hmm. and i i've used this on my own private trips, I used it in Moab last year. Mm -hmm. um, you've used it multiple times at camp, and it just it works really well. And so you're, um, but it is big, it is heavy, mm -hmm. and space. It it takes up space. Uh, but there's there's a lot of options. Uh, we also have this. It's a it's a water port. Um, it's got a. There's actually three different sizes. Of it's these. got a hose that attaches here. Mm -hmm. small it one. uses it uses air pressure. Mm -hmm. um, pressurize to to pressurize the water and, and have a shower there's so many different ones. i mean and theoretically the black heats up in the sun to make warm water eh. but I mean, we've used something like this before and you can boil water. just boil water and dump it in here to make a comfortable shower that works and then you also you know have shower on the trail another option but like i said on that water port there's three different sizes there's a smaller one for if you're just going out for a few days yeah it's almost there's, like a like a day, day tank or there's thing. a huge one it's like a five gallon that's a Two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half, three, like three gallons. Like um, another options like this, which is the, um, I can't even remember the brand of this one, but it's uh, just a scepter water tank that's been modified. Uh, runs off a little, little, little battery powered pack for the pump, and there's a shower hose that attaches here. So just like that, you can boil some water, throw it in here, get it to the right temperature, mm -hmm. and boom, you have nice hot water from a just just a water can like that. Yep. Um, and I didn't see you bring any of those out, um, but just the clean freaks, those wipes that smell like lavender and they smell oh, like yeah, the, what are those called? The they're clean freaks. Clean freaks? I'm okay. pretty sure that's what they're called. Yeah, there's, there's all kinds of wipes, but uh, they just make you feel fresh. I think that, I think you progress into that. Oh, absolutely. Definitely and, don't start with handing your, your, your I mean, I didn't spouse. start with the toilet that was a bag system. All, that's yeah. one thing about all of this. You have to modify it based on your significant other's comfort level. You don't want to start off with something like that. You want to make sure you have that communication and say... Start off with what feels the most familiar. And the best for her. And the best for her. Like, don't assume. Yeah. Have a conversation. Yeah, because we started with the Dometic toilet because mm -hmm. that felt the most comfortable, mm -hmm. seemed like the most clean. But then after using it for a couple of years, decided... Now I know. You know, that's actually got some drawbacks, kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. Now we moved to the clean waste thing and my life's a lot easier. Your <laughs> life's a lot easier. And we're both super happy. Yep. So, um, so toilet, showers, what else? I mean, there's also just being able, like Matt said, to allow for the time that it may take for someone to put on their makeup, take a shower, um, just have that comfort. Um, and also the space that you said, but also the battery stations that you have. If you're ever wanting to do oh, your yeah. hair. If you're like, going you to take a shower. Blow dry your hair, that may be a big deal. Yeah, if you're going to take a shower because your wife wants to mm -hmm. wash your hair, probably going to need something to, to blow dry it. Especially so if having, it's really cold. You're going to want warm yeah, warm so, hair. So, you know, taking a power station that will run a hair dryer. Yeah. Uh, there's so many options. And some of them just now. run them on low. Yeah. I mean, it depends on um, how. But making sure you have, have that aspect. So take a power station with you that, you know, a 500 plus, something that will handle 800 watts of power to run a hair dryer on low. And just remember during um, your trip that that's going to be used for a hair dryer. So it may cut some of that power out that you're going to want to use it for other things to make sure you're yeah. keeping that going. Yeah. Highly recommend like a thousand watt power station um, yeah. for, for a hair dryer at least 800 watts but yeah um, but yeah so so 
take that into consideration. Yeah. And I, I think that leads to really the whole second part is adjusting and planning the trip accordingly. Mm-hmm. Um, plan extra time at camp to Chill. allow uh, allow your your significant other to get ready in the mornings, mm-hmm. put the makeup on, fix her hair, may need the power station for a flat iron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Um, but make sure you, you add time in to the trip to make those accommodations. Yeah. Um, and just like, I can't like discuss that with her. And even like whenever we first started going to Colorado, we didn't have any of this. We did Airbnbs and we did like super comfort, but we also went out and wheeled. And so that was, it was nice to be able to go back to your Airbnb, have your own space to, you know, completely be clean, completely do like a home thing. Yeah. But then being out to experience things. You can do that at state parks. You can do that at like rec centers. Like, and, and that's a whole nother thing. Like if you eventually go camping, plan a trip to where you can go to a, a rec like in Moab, when we went, they had a really nice rec center. We took showers there, and we yeah, planned we that in the middle of the trip. camping the whole yeah. week, but in the middle, we went to the rec yeah. center and, and Or you plan a hotel trip, or, a ho- hotel in the middle of the yeah. week. Like, just know that that's something. You have to be flexible. Just like if you would be flexible for a trail, knowing that there's damage on a trail, it's going to take you time, and you have to adjust for that, count for the time also with your significant other. Yes, exactly. So, one... Plan it as easy as possible. Like you said, start with maybe going to a destination like Uray, Colorado, like Moab, Utah, something like that, and just stay in a hotel. Mm -hmm. Just stay in an Airbnb and just go out and and wheel. And in wheeling, don't go run the most hardcore trails. Do the scenic trails. Unless just they're okay enjoy with it. the beauty. Yeah, yeah, sometimes women are like, you know, gonna go, let's go do the trails, but then doesn't want to do the camping part. Yeah. You just have to think of your spouse or your, your significant other and plan for that. And like I said, that all goes around that communication. Yeah. If you want to, if your spouse doesn't care for camping mm-hmm. and doesn't like heights, the worst thing you can do is go to Colorado, mm-hmm. camp for several mm-hmm. days, and take her on Black Bear Pass. Yeah. You'll ruin the whole thing. Yeah, you, you will ruin get the back experience out there. and you will not get her back out there. <laughs> and then you'll but, be like, how do I get my girlfriend out? Well, you screwed that up. <laughs> yeah. But if you go to Ure, get a hotel or an Airbnb, and then take her up Yankee Boy Basin, mm-hmm. beautiful day. Flowers. I mean, flowers everywhere. You know, that's, mm-hmm. that's how to ease her way into it. And then yeah. the next time you go, maybe in this somewhere else and then somewhere yeah. else. Um, and then I love what you said, and we do this on almost all of our trips now, is if you are camping, plan a hotel in the middle of it, mm-hmm. which is exactly what we did in our Colorado trip mm-hmm. this year. We had three days we were camping, and then we, right in the middle, we got a hotel in Glenwood Springs, mm-hmm. and then finished the trip out with three more days camping. Yeah. And, and you knew it was that coming. Was good. And you, you knew it was yeah. coming. You're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I'll get it. Yeah, you knew it was coming. You knew there was, you know, at least one night that you're going to have a really good night's sleep in a hotel bed mm-hmm. and a really good shower. And a continental breakfast. And, and a great breakfast. All the out, you know, going out to eat, that sort of thing. <laughs> it's so, special. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if that's not available, you know, and if, if you want, as you're easing into camping, don't be afraid to stay at a state park. Yeah. Don't, but that has shower and, and bathroom you know, facilities. I would actually recommend you do that before you go on the long trips. Absolutely. Like stay in a state park somewhere local. Yeah. Or get or a air- forest service recreation campground. Yeah, it's an absolutely. established campground with a yeah. bathroom. Especially if you're wanting to push that limit. If she's willing to be like, you know what, let's try this. Try it somewhere where you can always dial it back. Or if you do go somewhere way out, make sure there's always hotel availability just in case. Yes. That yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, always be willing to pivot. There's been times where we've been out yeah. and we're just like, you know what? We just need a hotel for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> we just need to stop and yeah. regroup. Yeah. So, and, you know, in, gosh, now two and a half years, we're going to be hitting the road full time, mm-hmm. living out of our trailer in our two Jeeps. And even then, guarantee you mm-hmm. once a month at minimum, we're probably going to grab an Airbnb here and there. Yeah, just to have the space. Just to have, to, just just to, you know, yeah. just to decompress, just to have something different and, mm-hmm. you know, be more like normal. Yeah. So. Um, semi-normal. Semi-normal. <laughs> also, whenever you're out on these trails, 
if you know that the the terrain is going to be something that is not technical, let her drive. Ooh, that's good one. Yeah, yeah like, because I know for being a driver, like, if she's comfortable with it, driving gives you so much more control. So you feel like you're not, like, in the passenger seat, it's, like, you can't control anything and you're just looking at these ledges and it kind of gets scary. But as a driver, you have that control. You're the one steering. It's totally different. And I'm not saying start off with the technical trail and do that whole control driving thing. But even if you're just driving down like a forest service road somewhere near in the area, looking at the pretty like Yankee Boy Basin isn't that bad, I wouldn't think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's just so many different places where you can actually let her drive. Yeah. And who knows, after you know a couple of years of that, you may be buying your wife her own Jeep and yeah. you all go out and she's driving all the trails on her own. And, and maybe you know, a Grand Cherokee. No, whatever. But, you know, just but. as long as that's, it's always about taking that, those little baby steps to get up to where, and where they're comfortable. And if they don't ever get past a certain point, perfect. At least you're able to spend that time together mm -hmm. at that stage. Mm -hmm. And there is the reality that no matter what steps you take, no matter what, you know, you accommodations you are, are willing to, to deal with. I think a lot of women will do everything. She, she may just not. I mean, I, she may just not. And that's no. okay. But she also may go with you, stay at the Airbnb while you go out and will during the day. It all has to be something that you're willing to realize that that's, what, that's how it's going to be. Don't force her. That's just going to make it a lot worse. And I know for me, if you like try to force me into something, it makes me like... 100% not want to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, out of spite. Yeah. Oh, I just thought of one more thing. What? Sleeping accommodations. Oh, yeah. Sleeping accommodations. So, you know, it, when we first started, a, our very first camping trip together. Oh, we hammocks. We both slept in hammocks. Um, mm -hmm. Don't necessarily recommend that unless your wife, it's her idea, is like, I want to sleep in a hammock. But having a comfortable place to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and I think of our friends, Robert and John. Yeah. When they're out, they're both haymakers. When they are out with just when it's just a guy's trip, mm -hmm. they are very minimalist. Oh, absolutely. And sleeping in hammocks. Yeah. So very minimalist. But, but when we go out, Robert's got all the rooftop tents. He's tried to do everything. He but does. He's recently come up with the gazelle. Yeah, but when both of them go out mm -hmm. and we're all together and they've got their their wives with them, mm -hmm. they've got really nice gazelle tents, air cots. mattresses, cots, mm -hmm. whatever, and. They've got a, a nice, you know, a, a nice tent accommodation. Yeah. Um, Kara loves her, the rooftop tent, so we do that. I love the rooftop uh, tent, but I think one of the reasons, and I may be misspoken here, but I think the whole gazelle purpose is kind of like our camper purpose. You can stand up, have space to change. You have space to change. And it's dry. Yes. It's, it's having that enclosed area where that's a big deal. So if you have a rooftop tent, I highly suggest that you have an annex. That way you can just totally enclose that area and have just that yeah. extra space. Good plan. Yeah. Yeah. So the sleeping accommodations, there's so many options now. There is. Uh, but like I said, our, our friends, they, mm -hmm. they're minimalist when they're by themselves or when they're just on a guy's yeah. trip. But when they're with their wives, they pack the gazelle tent. They pack all the stuff and they make those accommodations for their wives. Yeah. And we, we have such a blast together, yeah. all of us. And I will say another thing that I find fun whenever I go out, I don't do any of the cooking. Of course, I don't do a lot of the cooking at home. <laughs> but you do the cooking and the cleaning and you do, you can pretty much take care of all of that. Because you, you like to cook. Mm -hmm. But okay. for that, but for a woman who knows all, you know, all the time she cooks all the meals. Yeah. It, Actually, do good meals yeah. at camp. Don't don't go out hot there dogs. and you know just do the hot dogs or mountain house or the. Think of it as like a date meal. night, like where yeah. you're performing yeah. a do, date. do good meals at camp. Yeah. Don't just hand your your your, your significant other a, yeah. a, a bag with wet you know <laughs> dehydrated meal. noodles in it. No. Um, don't, don't do that. So no. take care of them. Because you don't want them to be hungry. You don't want to be not sleeping good, and you don't want them to be uncomfortable. Like that's just a trifecta of disaster. Much it. Yep, that's pretty much it. So, I think yeah. that's it. I think it is. I think that's it. So, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. We'll be happy to answer them. And, and hopefully all we have, yeah. Fine. Hopefully we have given you some ideas to help, to to, to help figure yeah. out ways to get your spouse out. Because, yeah, I mean, I I I I love going out 
by myself from time to time. It's just therapeutic. It's mm -hmm. it's refreshing to, to go out on the solo trips and or on the guys trips. But my favorite thing is when we get to go out together. Yeah, mine too. I mean, that's super special to share mm. that with your spouse. Also, let the spouse plan some of the trip. I, yeah, have her pick places to go. Give her one of those books. What are the books? The fun trek books. The fun trek books. So here, and fun be tra like, what pick out look these trails. What are these trails? Yeah. yeah. Or areas even. Where do you want to go? What? Like, just make it a whole vacation for yeah. you and your spouse. Yeah. So, anyway, I, I hope this was helpful. We, yeah. we, we, we have so much fun doing this and want to encourage other couples to, mm -hmm. to get out together. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you would, like I said, post anything you got in the comments, any questions you got, um, anything that we missed, post them in the comments for other people yeah, to see. Absolutely. Um, I may you, take some recommendations. You might. <laughs> Uh, be sure and you know, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you're not. Check out our Patreon if you want access to you know, special content, special events, um, all of our GPS data to no cool places to go. And um, also our, check out our, our merch. You can check it out at shopoverlandapparel.com. That's right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.